But what do you really get for a thousand dollars? Sure, we love big benchmark numbers on charts and graphs, but increasingly I want to find better real world scenarios to demonstrate performance improvements from generation to generation of phone. This is proving a bit easier on Android than on iOS. As a brief tangent, I'm really not impressed with the current trend of speed race app launching videos as any reliable metric of performance. It's dramatic, it's fun, but it's exceedingly rare that I would want to have 20 apps open in memory, and this type of test does not actually grade performance. A cheap metaphor? It's like you have two cars, but you only time which car has the faster engine ignition, and then you use that to extrapolate which car would win the quarter mile, but I digress. As a practical application of mobile CPU power, one benchmark I've taken to running is timing how fast a phone can render one minute of UHD video. We've seen clear improvements in Android land, moving from the Qualcomm Snapdragon 820 to the 835, and now on the 845. Apple is all about creative types, yeah? So this should be a benchmark right up their alley. We even have a streamlined first-party app from Apple to best take advantage of this hardware when editing and rendering UHD video. Perfect. In my test, I used the exact same one minute sample, a 100 megabit per second UHD video pulled from my Panasonic G85. No filters, no text, no color correction. We're really trying to keep this simple and keep everything fair. We push render and the iPhone XS cranks out a one minute UHD video in one minute, 15 seconds. That's not bad. Against the OnePlus 6 though, it loses by roughly 20 seconds. It's also slower than the Qualcomm A35 in my LG V30, but that race is a lot closer. Hey, but the iPhone XS did beat the BlackBerry Key 2, so well done. Hey, snarkiness aside, this is Apple. So maybe we got a higher quality video. That would be worth the difference in rendering, right? Nope. PowerDirector on Android delivered a final output at twice the bitrate of iMovie on the iPhone. Not necessarily a commentary on quality, but the Android phones are processing twice as much information per second and still arriving at a faster rendering time. Okay. Well, staying inside the iOS software ecosystem. At least new iPhone owners are getting better performance than previous generations of iPhones. They're always showing us those graphs on improvements during Apple keynotes. There's a huge limiter on the iPhone XS. Running the same video through iMovie on my iPhone SE, the SE beat the XS by a fraction of a second. If we're using this as a real world test, that's margin of error. But comparing these two phones, Apple A9 to A12 Bionic, half as much RAM, older, slower storage, and I have the 16 gigabyte SE, we get the same performance rendering this video. The same. I ask this a lot and I don't mean it as a gotcha question. I earnestly wanna know, what do you really get with these improvements? The Apple A12 is a beast of a processor, no doubt, but what can you really do with it? What are the practical, real world benefits if we can't actually tap into that power? So I'm throwing this out to my community, well, not throwing the phone, I'm just throwing out this question. How else can we benchmark phones? Generically watching video gameplay is only one small aspect of overall performance. App launch speed tests are super gimmicky, more a test of RAM management than power. On Android phones, I can also test video stabilization in post-processing but I haven't found any way to do that on an iPhone. Apparently iPhone users just like to edit shaky video. <laughs> what else can we do outside of racking up those tasty looking synthetic benchmark numbers to get a handle on what we'll really get when we purchase a new phone? I await your comments down below this video. As always, thanks so much for watching. This iPhone Odyssey has been a trip and I'm wrapping up camera and audio deep dive reviews. If you'd like to get a much closer look at the photo and video and audio performance of a $1,000 phone, please head over to patreon.com slash some gadget guy. Those intense reviews are patron exclusives. You get better coverage in addition to some fun perks while supporting production on this channel. Plus, it's shaping up to be a really fun community of like-minded tech fans. You know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Facebooks, the Twitters, and the Instagrams, and I will catch you on the next video. Does not actually grade performance. Shit. <laughs>